horse truck. We've got the trailer behind us, but we do not have any horses with us. We are headed to see our new granddaughter and family, and then we are headed tomorrow to um, northern Massachusetts. Someone has offered to give us some horse-drawn equipment that they have. As you can see, we're enjoying some nice scenery today on our way, and um, we've got this 20-foot long trailer, and you know what we got in the back of it? Three little kittens in a 20-foot trailer. That's all we got back there. Um, and uh, we have some friends in Vermont who wanted some kittens, so we're taking three of our kittens. They weren't too happy about being in the box that I put them in, but th I think they'll be happy with a the life they're going to lead in Vermont on a little farm. So come on along with us today. Any words? We are pulling into a spot where we can hopefully get some lunch. That's all I have to say. Uh, yeah, so that's one of the fun things about traveling. It's one of the things we like to do anyways. Well, come on along with us. Well, good morning. It is the next day. We are in Massachusetts. We finally found the place. It's on the end of a, a dirt road. And this is uh, exciting. Right now, Jim is in finding out what things um, Kathy is needing to what things Kathy is wanting to share with us and there's some old equipment here some neck yokes and eveners and we'll see what else is going on we brought our son Levi along with us he's big and strong and he can help us get all of these things loaded so, so we'll be showing you uh, what treasures we'll be bringing back to the farm um, last night we had a nice visit once again with our family and Jim was able to meet little baby Winnie and she's growing so well and we were so thrilled to be able to see, I was so thrilled to be able to see her two weeks in a row. So let's see what's going on here. On my Suffolk punch. Oh, so you got a, I, I had there. a Suffolk You got one from, from, uh, Fair one's fine. Bailey's, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it was on him three times. Yeah. Is the pad no good or you can't use that? I don't know if it's any good. It's been hanging up there forever. I don't know if the mice yeah. got it. The mice got it? The, okay. The, the newer okay. ones. Yep, yeah. that's fine. Great. How, what how size is that? Uh, not even sure, it. but... 26. Oh, good. That's actually the size I use on most of my horses. Well, I that's going to work that's out. That's nice. Perfect. And you know, you, you, you wouldn't want that, right? The harnesses? Yeah. So they just could stay with the place and go to... Yeah. Do you want it I, or you I know would. somebody who would take it and then the... Um, I would because... And you know what? The hames. You could have the hames. Because uh, those fit that. Yeah, I would take them. Okay. You know what I might do? And we did this one at a time. We had a contest. I don't know if you happened to see that particular video, but we had some old harnesses I got when I first had the colts, started training the colts. Yeah. And they outgrew them. And we had a contest and we actually gave them away. Okay. They went to remember. Remember. Well, yeah. I was thinking too. Maybe you could trade them for services with your Amish friends. You know. Right. Right. I, I mean, you know, the barter system in New England. I know you're an old oh, New yeah. Englander, so. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you know, he's yep. a big barter. We can throw them out. <laughs> okay. We'll start getting loaded up. That. How far back we should come? Well, you, okay. want you, you, you want some? You want some? Yeah. Got planks. I got two planks right there. Oh, and by the way, we were able to deliver the little kitties. Well, they picked up the little kitties last night, so we'll be we'll be having a heavier load on the way home. The grandkids were able to play with the kitties for a few minutes before they went to their new place. Oh, it's got a flat tire. But 
Here is the mower. And there's an, an old ladder that is coming our way as well. It's McCormick Deering number seven. Kathy said there's another seat that can go on there as well. Our what? I'm over up to the feet. Don't let it go. <laughs> well, at least when you get home, you'll have the horses. <laughs> yeah, we should have them pull it off. Right? All of those little things are good. Stay. Okay, now we have to slide this plank apart again. Um, if we keep that counter up, and this will come down. It's, it's really neat. It's Randolph, Vermont. Vermont. Oh, that's really cool. That is cool. Uh, but I, I, I think I'm going to pass on it. But well, someone would love this in a museum. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, well, this is so nice of you. It's a You know, so you help potatoes. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a shoe, isn't it? Yeah, but look at this side here. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Oh. And this side broke. Oops. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what it is. Come on. But here's a possibly uh, a good, decent walking problem. Hon, you don't want the miller for our three, three rows of potatoes, do you? But it's broken. Oh, it's broken. It's broken. Somebody can do that. Oh, we gotta grab that cultivator too. We need cultivator for the garden. <coughs> yeah. We gotta get this cultivator. Treasures. Treasures, treasures, treasures. Needs a new handle. We can get that done now. I think we've done it before with it's a nicey. So Kathy was just saying that the, the track up there is for bringing loose hay into the barn and there's this platform here there's a um whatever you call it, bay, <clears throat> excuse me, bay over there, and there's a bay over here. Levi's sneezing down there. And Jim just found the, uh, the, uh, the hay grabber thing for the overhead track, and he's bringing that home. He's, he's got plans for that. So this is apparently what the previous owner used to make rope. Huh. Are there any examples of the rope he made? Yeah, right here. Here, look at all these ropes. So he made all these. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. He was in the Merchant Marines, Kathy said, and he made rope. <sighs> he was with Perry, Admiral Perry. Huh. So this yeah. is probably the rope for the hay fork, would you think? I don't, I, I don't think he used the hay fork because he had a baler. Okay. So those are harnesses for draft horses. That was my right? that was my Suffolk Punch's draft his harness. Okay, great. I'll get the bridle. Levi, doesn't that feel good in your hands again? So you don't mind if I actually gave these away to somebody on our channel no. as a contest? No. I really like doing that. I think it helps other people out. And... Levi's closing the door. It's a bear to close. 
and we're going to be on our way and we just are very very grateful to kathy for all her generosity kathy is very grateful to you guys uh -huh. for, that it's not in somebody's front lawn rotting yeah and like i said i'm so mad at myself that i didn't think of this a year and a half ago did you get oh the whole yeah i think i did yeah. we got we got some cargo on the way home here um, I don't know if we could have got down here earlier anyway, so let's, as far as we're concerned, I don't know if we would have made it earlier. Sure, so. earlier. Well, she said she would, wish she would have thought oh, about it's it earlier. it's so hard to get away. We had so many trips we were hoping to do and nothing's worked out. Good thing you had a baby. Forced yeah, us to get I out know, of there. I know, yeah. <laughs> and, and then when we left yesterday, I brought Lady from the Colts over with Bill and she started, she was laying down flat on her side. And I checked her over, I am certain she wasn't going to have a fall, but it still concerned me. Here we are leaving for overnight, and then we got her due any day now, and how that happened, but I was pretty confident she wouldn't have a fall. She was probably just getting it in position. Yeah, probably. And then, a few hours later, before we actually did leave, both her and Bill were laying out flat on the ground, which, oh. it's unusual. They don't usually lay down when they're outside. Um, it's interesting, they almost seem like they lay down, horses, my horses lay down as much or more in the barn than they do outside. So. Yeah, but the sun and I've seen a lot of horses yeah, laying like down. It's like the this, sun, the sun right sun now. So long. And yeah, so and it's been so muddy they couldn't. Yes. Now yeah. you can. Yes. yes. Well. Okay. Well, thanks can I give again. You a hug? Uh, I'll give you a hug. Oh. <laughs> so before we left on our trip, there was quite a few things we had to do. Recently, Abby has taught me how to run the drone, so I am going to do a little drone footage and show you. Some of the things that we have to do when we're getting ready to go on a trip. Right here we have Lady, Duke and Earl in the further pasture together, but I didn't want to leave them there while we we're gone. I decided to bring Lady back in and put her with Bill, so Bill would be happier as since he'd have somebody with him. So I have to go check the cows closely to make sure they're not in any troubles with having calves and get a count as to how many cows we have. As we go into this section right here, the cows are a little bit scared of the drone. And they tend to head into the woods and get out of my way. So here I've put Lady in the barnyard with Bill to keep him company and they have access to water and they actually have the door open to Lady's box stall so that she can go inside if she wants to. And it is going to make it a lot easier for Abby, she's the one, our daughter, she's the one that's going to be doing chores for us while we're gone.
out here we have Baron and Ken and they're together in this separate pasture and they're used to being together and so they do have shoes on and it's a little bit risky that they might kick each other but they're quite used to each other so I don't think that'll happen. I'm very confident they'll be fine together. Okay, we better check one more time on our cows. And now we can see them a lot better. We have three nice calves out there that are doing well. Here we have one cow all by herself and laying down. I thought maybe she was in labor, but she's not. She's just laying down and being content. One last thing to check on. Got to make sure Duke and Earl are all right out there all by themselves, and I'm sure they will be. They're quite content out there. So now we're ready to go on a trip. Well, good morning again, everybody. So we made it home last night from our trip and I've got everything off except for the one mow machine. Let me go show you that first. Um, give you a better idea of what we're dealing with. This is a number seven McCormick and the difference between this and a number nine, there's not a huge amount of difference except one and it's fairly major. All the weight from the gearbox or almost all the weight is on the front of the tires, which means it has a lot more tongue weight than the number nines because the number nines, which is the ones I have that I'm using are the majority of the weight are behind the wheels to help balance things out. This of course needs a long tongue. This obviously was pulled with a tractor a little bit. And this is still maybe a good mower. I have no idea. Uh, I have pulled a lot of these mowers off the fence rows that have sat around for years and put them right into back into working use. Um, this one, of course, has two flat tires. And I have only had one mow machine with, a, with rubber tires on before, and I really liked it. And I'd love to have another mow machine with rubber tires. Um, but I'm not so sure if I want that heavy gearbox there. So I may, I may do some trading with this one and trade it off for a number nine or some, something else. Um, but anyways, if over time, I probably will get this fixed up and going, but uh, it might sit in the shed for a little while until I have time to do that. The main reason I went down on this trip machine, I kind of thought something like this would be really handy uh, for several reasons. One thing I really want to do in my videos is show people what you can do with horses. And a lot of times, I would never use a single horse on a job because I have enough horses to use two. But um, a lot of times one horse works just great. And I like to show people that if you only have one horse, how much you can do. And so anyway, I want to get this set up as a one horse mower. I've never had a one horse mower. Um, I don't know a thing about one horse mowers, but I think I can probably with a little bit of help from some other people figure out how to get a set of shafts on here and get this going. The, the mechanical stuff, I'm sure I can get going myself or I'm pretty sure I can. I've had a fair amount of experience with that. Uh, I just don't know how to hitch a set of chavs on here. If any of you guys have any um, old pamphlets on how chavs went on one horse mower, or just have some uh, real experience with how the chavs went on, it'd be great to hear from you. Now there's nothing here to hitch the whipple tree to also. And on all the uh, T mowers, you have to go back to um, actually, there's usually a hole right here. Yeah, it still is right here. And that's where you actually pull off. There's a rod that comes here and hitches onto your evener on the horses on the team. But I would assume that it'd be the same thing here with a single horse. You don't pull off the tongue, you pull off right here. So those are things I got to figure out and find out. This may take a long, long time to actually get it going. 
but it's something I'd really like. I, I've got an idea that maybe a single horse around my fence post, cutting, clipping around fence posts would work really nice, and I'd like to try that. Um, so this is, this is a closed gear mow machine. Some of the mowers, and I believe the number six mower, if I'm not mistaken, because I had one of them years and years and years ago, that was what they call an open gear mower, and this was actually exposed. But this is a closed gear, so this cover comes over, and uh, so um, that's how that is. Um, it's very, very dry in here. It doesn't look like a bit of oil in there. Um, I went to drop the cutter bar down even this morning, and it won't even come down. Something's even holding that. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the, the Pitman is holding it and it's froze right on there so it won't let go. So I'll have to get after that and work on that. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do on a lot of this equipment, but it'll be kind of fun. I can kind of show you guys how I do it, and uh, maybe we'll make some progress on it over, the, over a period of time. I noticed with... This right here is how you kick in and out of gear, which is totally different from the bigger two horse mowers. Anyhow, there are no grease fittings on this one. It's all just oil um, caps that you dump oil into there. And that's why this is here originally for the old, and definitely for this, you keep an oil can right here. So as you work throughout the day, you can open these up and dump oil in them. And there's a lot of them. So. Anyways, that's where we're at with this equipment. I got the cultivator out, the plow out, um, the one horse cultivator out, and uh, and as you can see, I even got my new ladder hung up on the wall. So I am happy with this. I, I want to thank Kathy again um, for, uh, you know, willing to pass this equipment on to us. So hopefully we'll get some real use again on a lot of this. So we're gonna close up this video for today, but if you guys are uh, liking um, fixing up equipment, horse-drawn equipment and stuff like that, I will be doing a little bit of that in some of the videos to come. Um, I am really not the best mechanically a, a guy that's uh, be the best one to show you how to fix this stuff up, but I can usually get it working and uh, to suit me. So you guys have a great day and we will see you next time.